So I was in town and did a replacement for the front windshield of the truck and got a tip about a generator being sold. So I went to look at that and yeah, well, it's this. So the guy wanted 1,500 and the guy had this. I mean, this is a really big compressor, diesel driven compressor. So he had this sitting there too. And I asked, asked the price, what do you want for bo both of them? And he said 3000. And I was like, sure thing, let's load them up. If this works, I actually have a rock drill for this I'm going to test. So I'm really excited about this. Well, I'm excited about this too. Okay, so this feeder pump is broken. So what a guy did is that he just put an electric membrane pump here instead. So you apparently supposed to start it like so. I also got a new feeder pump included, but it wasn't installed. So I guess I could install this or maybe there is a reason why this hasn't been installed. Maybe this just works pretty good. I don't know. Uh, let's start by to see that everything working. Just measure it up and 
this is pretty much the ignition and then you I'm supposed to go so Okay, so this is revving too high. It's giving out 50, what was it, 56 hertz. This is supposed to be 50. Right, so that is much better. I don't know if there's... I guess that's the fine adjuster. I'm not really sure. I don't know what this is, like pipe coming out and just... Right, let's test something to see... To see if it can power it. Thousand watts. Crank him up. All right. So I realized when you are taking out four thousand watts, the voltage really dropped and the hertz. So I don't know. Maybe it wasn't a good setting before. So it's just that when running empty, it runs kind of high, and then when it's put under a load, it's running good. I'm gonna go and get a bigger heating fan. I gotta get a three phase one, five kilowatts. I think I, or is it 10 kilowatts? Well, let's go find out. I think I have one. Let's try this. This is five kilowatts. Alright, so this seems to be running fine. I'm not really sure about the hertz, how much it matters for. I guess it's depending on the application, like finer electronics that might be a thing, but just using it for an electric motor as I'm, I'm going to do. Maybe it just slows it down. Oh, I gotta read up on that, but. So this generator is rated for, it says here, 20 kilovolt amperage and the effect. Efficiency factor is 0.8, so I guess it's 20 times 0.8, so 16 kilowatts of power is what this is giving. But I'm just going to use this for my conveyor. I mean, it works. Let's leave it like that. I'm just gonna give it a service, and it's pretty much just good to go. The oil plug is down here, and there's no way I can get underneath with something here. I need to make some kind of hose that leads this oil out.
This is just going to be a mess. I'm just gonna lift it up. Well, hopefully there's a number on this. Otherwise, I'm not going to know what I'll order. Yes, we got numbers here. Let's take a photo of those. All right, so after some research, I did find a filter kit for this. So, two fuel filters and an oil filter. It seems like this engine is made before, was it 69? To have this kind of filter so i mean this type of filter are supposed to fit all the ford 2000 3000 4000 5000 6000 i don't know how far that list went but it was a lot so hopefully this fits i also bought a be new belt here Okay, I don't know, this seems to be much bigger in comparison, but yeah, this end doesn't really look the same. It seems to be the same length, but it's just that the width is smaller. Well, let's see if that matters. How was this? I think this was to the not, was it? Yeah, that's supposed to go there, so. Okay, it seems to be fitting pretty fine here, so I don't think there's a problem. Okay. There are some rubber things here I can change.
bring it. Right, for so for the fuel filters. Well, this seems to be smaller. All right, so so this fuel filter is not gonna fit. I guess they they changed this fuel filter holder. So yeah, well this isn't gonna fit. So I gotta order other ones here. So let's change the belt instead. At least it's easy to change. You can see how it started to crack up here. So. So, this looks really homemade actually. I guess it works anyway. So I got my hands on fuel filters, same one as this, and uh, air filter. Yeah, so this looks a little bit better. This has a, you can see here, it's a, it has a welded nut for holding it in with a screw there. Well, this one has not. Yeah, this is really some pat pending stuff. Well, I guess we can. So I mean, I guess I could buy a new filter holder. They are not really that expensive, a plastic holder. I think they run for about 250 euros, somewhere there, so. I just want to make sure this works really good and function as it should, and then start spending more money and do more stuff to it. Right, so that is stuck there. I mean, this is still pressing pretty good on the filter. I don't think I... Whoa. My plan was to 
put a closing valve here so I easily could next time changing when changing oil I could just screw on a hose here but I don't know about this thread it doesn't fit here all not, none of my couplers does fit this so so well I guess there's not much to do to just put this back here I'm not really sure about the oil volume in this I'm gonna start with this to see where it leads So it's just over the full line there, so this oil filter is gonna take quite a lot, so maybe a liter more, but I gotta start it first to see. So the vibrations are kind of high here, so I gotta put this to maybe take away, take away some of them. So this is a new battery. Now it's coming. This is down to add now, so. found a grease point here. That's good. Well, there are still some things I like to do with this. One is to yeah, put wheels on this, so you can just pull it with the car. It's really hard handling like this. Another thing is the warning system on this is, it seems like it has been connected to a horn here. So if you're running low on oil, the horn is a supposed to sound but well the cable is hanging there so it's not really connected. I'm thinking simply just something that an electric actuator to the kill switch to pull this back and kill the engine. So I gotta put the top back on and take this to the crusher and then start with the compressor. I kind of need that compressor right now. The stuff in the background by the way that's my neighbors. The top of the line goes here so so what's interesting is that Thank <laughs> you. 
mean, it seems to work fine. I gotta leave it here for now. Let's go and have a look at the compressor instead. Try to see if that works. All right, so let's go through this compressor. I tried doing some kind of research for this, but I didn't find out what kind of brand this is. It seems to be something made in Denmark, but I didn't really find anything. But something I can say is that this is a Volvo D47 engine. That I know, but I know nothing about the compressor. So this is the compressor unit. It seems to be six cylinders. But yeah, there is a there is some there is a plate there, but it doesn't really say anything. It's like D two one zero type. So yeah, doesn't tell me much. So these are pretty much just air filters with oil. The purpose of those are that it sucks air in here. The air goes through the oil and then into the compressor. What the oil does is that it, it takes out all the small particles in there. So it gets clean air here. So this is a good thing to have in dusty conditions. I don't know, let's change the batteries. I got a new one for, the, for that since this is totally dead. I gotta make something here to hold the battery. All right. These are way overfilled. I don't know. I think they had a tarp over this, so it hasn't been leaking water into this at least, but there's way too much oil in this. I think the maximum level is here. This is up here somewhere. also too much oil in that. So it doesn't seem to have so many hours on it. It's uh, 381 hours. And I mean, it seems to be Swedish. I mean, all this text here is on Swedish. Maybe it is some, some military thing. Let's try to start it. I don't even know if this has fuel, but it seems to be fuel here in the cup, so. I need to change this. You can really feel that there's a lot of play here. Uh, let's just try to start it again.
Okay, so this seems to be the throttle. So when pretty much regulates, when it reaches pressure, it, this will push down and put it to idle. And I wonder what... Oh, now I see. So I think this spring is actually going on to here. So if you want to... Let's try that. So this spring is going here. So if you want to pull, take it to full throttle. All right, like so. Now it's full throttle. And it can still put it into idle by pushing this down. All right. I wonder what the, why the spring was there. Oh, it doesn't really want to sit there. So. Okay. Leave it like so. Oh, it's a dead mouse. Well, that's not the best way to die. Sure, it was a lot of water there too, so I guess you're going here to clean them out. I'm not sure about the oil volume in this. I mean, the oil pan looked kind of small. I gotta start off by yeah, 10 liters and see where, where it gets me. All right, so that seems to be a pretty good volume. I mean, it's just above the line here. I mean, we're starting the engine and the filter fills, so I think it's, this is gonna be good.
All right. <laughs> this looks old. I did order a filter for this. I'm just not sure if that's gonna fit. It was pretty much a gambling, but let's try. That sure look old. Oh, they got some numbers there. If someone's interested in that. Let's try it. Let's see if this goes here. Alright. It seems to fit. Yeah, I think so. Let's just bring in the bottom. Yep. I don't think you can really take this apart. No. So I'm gonna see if this fits. I'm gonna steal that. This is a Volvo TD71 I have standing here. It's supposed to work. It's just that the project I have for this is not going to be done this year.
Right, so I don't have a new filter for this since I had no idea what kind of filter this was. So, yeah, I'm gonna try to find some number on this. So after cleaning this up, there are some kind of numbers here. It's just really hard to read. Let's see if this works. I don't know, let's start with that. It's like eight liters now. Let's try with that. You can actually see the oil level in this, so it's about here. I don't know, I guess that's good. I guess this is made so you can't overfill it. So the black mark here, that's the maximum filling line of oil. Otherwise, filling above this and the, there's a big risk the engine is going to start breathing the oil. So before putting this back together, I gotta build something to hold the battery in place. There is actually holes here and a nut welded underneath. It's just that it's a really exact fit.
No, these got a little long, but I can cut them out later. I gotta use this thing instead. It's a battery shoe that you can use as a breaker. So if you want to disconnect the battery, just screw it up like that. And now it's disconnected and now it's connected again. So you just put this on between that. So. So, yeah, this is going nowhere. So I did order a new filter. It's just that the delivery time for this seems to be quite long, so... I'm gonna have to reuse this until the new one arrives. I mean, it's really not that bad. So I guess this is an air plug. This is the highest point, so if I... So I gotta run the engine and open this to bleed out the air in this system.
Anyone know what this is for something? What are these meant for? I wonder if it's something to do with the... Nah. I don't know. Maybe it's not even supposed to be this compressor. So it's always good to have to some spare oil. Guess we can keep this here too. So I'm gonna put a little bit of clear coat on this. I think that's gonna make it stay on. So. There's a few things I'm gonna order to this. And while waiting for that, I'm gonna take this home and give it a test ride. So I got a rock drill at home. I'm kind of excited to actually test this with that. So to see how, how much faster it is than my gasoline driven one. I mean, this thing is actually really heavy. I don't know, I, I think I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna need to buy a new one of these so you can actually screw it up because if you drop this to the floor the weight to get it up I don't know how much that is but it sure is a lot so I pretty much just lived there and the tire exploded here so I'm gonna burn the clutch on the car if I keep going with this. And I'm pretty much gonna ruin the rim, so the tire is really starting to hop out. It's not like I'm surprised that it, this actually broke, it's just that uh, it's weakened now, so I haven't been able to go and get new ones. I gotta go and search, maybe I can find something to put on here. Alright, so I found this. The only problem is that this is kind of leaking air, so there's no air in it, but I think this will actually fit. I got another rim of that, so I could go and get those tires new instead. I mean, it looks kind of cool with that. Let's see if this car compressor can... really seem to be working so let's do it like this instead. 
if this works. I mean, I do got this old hose here. So I gotta, I gotta lift it up and take off the two tires and get them done to the workshop. You know what? I think I'm gonna go with these wheels instead. I mean, I really like the look of this. So. So this is pretty much much the same rim. I don't know, it, it's like the rim with the stripes is deeper than these rims are. So well, let's get this. pretty close from where I live. It's like, I think it's 50 kilometers to get here. Alright, so let's go have a look.
can see here it was just a matter of time before this is going to explode too so Alright, so two new tires for these two with mounting and everything I paid 80 euros so I don't know I think that was really cheap for two tires I don't know the brand but well I don't really care he said they, they would be good for this kind of weight and work for this application so I'm happy with that and a new whatever that thing is called this old one was a little bit tired here I don't know I, I think this is yeah, kind of too weak for this application this thing is really heavy duty so it works the only thing I really need it for is to when put it on the hook is to lift it up I, I, there's no way I'm gonna drag this around and using the, that as, as a third wheel so this is way too heavy for that so I also got some new hose I gotta put on here this is 20 meters with six coppers I think I think I paid around six euros per meter for this one. The diameter inner diameter is one inch. So there's two pieces, ten meters and ten meters. Maybe some kind of a 90 degree angle would be good having here. Let's give it a try. Let's try to sweep this dirt out of here. So I turned off the air and the engine stalled and now it doesn't want to start again so I don't know what happened. 
Yeah, I'm gonna try to see if it's getting any diesel to start with. There is a diesel coming when, when priming it, so let's try to bleed this and see if we actually got some diesel coming. So this is completely dry, so it's not putting in any diesel. I wonder what it can be. Is that like... I mean there's no, no problem here, so it got diesel. It's just... I wonder if it can be something with this. I mean there is fluid in the tank and there's fluid here. I mean it's almost like, you can see that this is the... So this is the air cylinder that when when I push the stop button, this is pushed down through this rod here. And I mean, this is, this is supposed to go up automatically. But I mean, you know, there's something wrong with this. Hmm. All right, now it works. But not when I. I don't really want to take that apart. It feels like I gotta get more trouble by doing so. I gotta try so to give it a few taps. Oh, let's see if that helps. So in order to get this off, I need to get this off. You know what, instead of taking this complete part off, I'm just gonna, gonna open this hatch to see what's going on there first. Right. Guess I'm voiding the warranty now. Isn't there supposed to be a lot of oil? So I guess the oil level is supposed to go somewhere here, right? This doesn't really seem to have an oil level at all. Yeah, I think it's stuck there. Just like... Right, so I gotta take this cover off. None of these screws are really tight. I don't know if they vibrate loose or someone didn't type them. Oh, there's a spring in here. All right, how do you get that off? Am I supposed to take this off? Oh, that's right. <laughs> I 
I don't know why this screw is like one kilometer long, but because it's coming out. There we go. Well, didn't help getting that off. All right, I can get that out. Well, and there comes that. Well, <laughs> straight in the bucket. All right, so this spring is going onto this lever. You see that? I'm just trying to remember this afterwards. So it's going to that hole there. So let's get that out. Oh, there we go. So this thing here is is what's re regulating the fuel. Cool. You can see these things moving. So this is idle and this is full speed. So the thing that sits here is the governor. Somehow I think this was the problem. It hung up on some way. I don't really know, but I just gonna try to crank the engine. It's supposed to spit off fuel now. So now it's coming diesel here. How could it get stuck? I mean, when I think back, even touching the throttle, these things didn't move back when this was in place. So it was stuck somehow. If I understand how these kind of inline pumps work is that, so there's pretty much a camshaft going here, which in turn, make the plungers go up and down pumping in diesel here and this thing here it what is what you just regulate how much diesel it's supposed to put in or maybe a kind of a bypass so it, when the throttle is totally closed the diesel will pretty much just bypass from going in here and when it fully open no bypass will happen and when it's half open, 50% bypass, 50% not bypass, <laughs> maybe. And the camshaft pretty much go goes to the governor. And the governor is meant for to keep a consistent RPM. So this just work with centrifugal force. So this pretty much go goes inside here. And the more the engine is revving, the more these will open up. Pushing this thing in. Everything here is kind of connected, but this have has the, <laughs> the last word to say. So this lever here is what, what is connected to the throttle, which in turn is connected to this. What happened if... Well... <laughs> they're into the bucket. I gotta use a liquid gasket here and there's no way I gotta get the part in here with these things on. I mean I still need to fit this thing and the spring and with liquid gasket all around it. Um, yeah, 
It's just going to be a mess. So the problem is just getting this in here and the spring here. Yes! Woo! It's there! Now let's see you so I don't smear the gasket on something. I don't want to smear it on. And that is there. There we go. I'll get that back in there. There we go. So, smear it on. We got some new bolts. I mean, it's way easier using hex key than a regular Phillips. So this long screw I took out from here, uh, this has to be the idle screw. The question now is, does this thing get oil from the engine? I'm guessing the camshaft is getting oil from the engine, but I'm not sure if the governor is getting engine oil. Is that what this hole is for? For actually filling oil? Um, this thing is the oil level. Put this back together. So you know what? I'm gonna fill this with oil. I'm gonna open this until it's filled to this point here. And I'm not sure if that's the level, but at the same time, I mean, what is this plug for? There's not nothing beneath it. But makes any sense for anything else so.
I got these two things that can be used with the compressor. I never used this since, well, I didn't have anything with enough air pressure to actually power, power this thing. So, so this thing is a breaker. It doesn't rotate, it just, yeah, I won't break stuff. And this is a rock drill. So I guess the air is going here and this is for the water since these are built to be used in mines. So to avoid dust, you're supposed to use water. I can use the accessories I got with the gas drill. It's not really the right socket to use with these, but I guess it works. So there sure is some power in this thing. Uh, I guess this <laughs> this thing is actually meant for meant for hard hard dirt and stuff like that. It's this is not meant for rock, or this was not meant for rock. Kind of squish that tip now. Uh, can grind that out. But even though it still made some serious marks here. So the next scene should have been me drilling with the rock drill, but I had the wrong coupler for connecting the rock drill to the air hose. So yeah, I did order that, but when that arrived I was in full business fixing my well here using this to kind of yeah getting the water up. I gotta link that video in the end of this if you want to see me blowing some air in a well with this. So what I gotta do now, I got some new filters for this and a new exhaust. And then I got gonna need to fix this. So yeah, it's not really a good thing that snow can get get into the oil filled cans.
So the plan with cutting this off is that every time you start this thing, I mean, you start it from that side and then you go around to handle the, the throttle from this side. You, you pretty much got all the exhaust straight in your face. I mean, it's maybe not a big thing, but it got kind of annoying. I'm gonna put this little thing on instead. And I also got a new air filter. Not really that expensive. I think I paid. This is like 80 euros and 15 euros. So this thing is actually a little bit loose. I think that's why they use electrical tape here to just give it a snugger fit here. So it's not really possible to tension this more. The old pipe was pressing against this part here, so I'm gonna try to center it here. I think I'm just gonna weld this straight to the bottom piece here. I'm not going to bother. Yeah, let's do it. So the plan was just using this and then something to prevent water from getting down here but I actually found this. This is from my old truck, the old man truck and I mean it would be nice to be able to use this but it's a little bit too small so I thought why not. I can just weld this piece here and then put this piece here. I mean, <laughs> it is kind of cool that way. 
so let's go with that. So this is heat spray, it's meant for hot stuff like this. This filter is supposed to fit to the compressor unit, so I guess we can change that. So this looks the same, doesn't it? Uh, it this is a little longer. I don't think that's gonna matter. Right, so I just gotta remember to bleed this. So I'm just gonna spot weld this sheet here. Same on that side. Just so water doesn't run down here in the oil filled filters. So I found myself some Takuchi Red. This is the color I used for my first excavator when I bought that. So this is like four years old. 
But there seems to be in the bottom here. So the top part is gonna come rather close here, so I'm just gonna cut off a piece so it has some breathing room. <laughs> you know. Cutting straight with this thing isn't really an option, so... It's a little bit loose even though it's max tight enough. Okay, so let's move. Let's give it a let's give it a proper test. So I would say this is pretty much done now for next summer's adventures. And that's stuck there. You can see the distance here now is. I mean, it's good and protected here. New air filter.
Yeah, so let's just give it a test start to see. I'm just curious to see how that works. That worked really fine. I really like the sound from this now. It's much more, I don't know, it so sounds more powerful. with this it's kind of just working in short bursts and then it stops huh. I don't maybe it's something some kind of restriction if you don't have the real rod that pushes down on it it doesn't really want to spin or something like that or it's in need of service so yeah but I also have this so this is a smaller version much easier to handle I guess. Never really used this for drilling so I don't know. So I'm gonna try if this works or if it's the same thing with this. So I think these are just frozen, but that's why they're working kind of bad. I mean, this has been outside in the car, so it was... That's pretty much it. There's not really much more I can do right now. I mean, it's below 20 degrees outside and there's a lot of snow, so there's no way I'm gonna get this to the mountain and test it on, on some rocks and stuff like that. So yeah, we're gonna have to wait around six months before the snow melts and then I'm gonna start this up again. I think it's gonna be really fun drilling with this. Feels like it's gonna be fast. So yeah, so let's call it for this time. So this is a trailer I got from a friend. The plan for this was using it with the generator. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm gonna take the axle from this and just put it 
on to the generator or if I'm going to use this complete trailer just put a generator on top of this the only problem with that is that I'm not going to be able to pull it with the car if I use this complete unit so so I gotta think about what I'm gonna do maybe I just take the axle from this Thank you.